Good afternoon, I welcome you to this session of ice engine and gas turbine and today we will discuss about the uh, carburetor. In fact, in continuation of my uh, discussion we had in the last lecture that is the you know carburetor. Today we will see that uh, what will be the flow rate of the air, flow rate of the fuel. So, if we can correctly recall in my last lecture we have discussed about the mass flow rate of air when piston travels from TDC to BDC and we have calculated the actual as well as the ideal mass flow rate. Now, today we will see that because of this mass flow rate of rather because of the flow rate of air uh, when the flow air flow approaches the uh, you know uh, throat I can say venturi because of this reduction is reduction in the cross sectional area velocity will be increased pressure will fall and that fall in pressure will be uh, I mean the you have we have to design venturi in such a way that the, there will be fall in pressure the drop in pressure and the drop in pressure will be such that there will be a differential pressure between the float chamber and the uh, outlet of the you know uh, dis, uh, fuel, jet, fuel jet orifice and uh, that pressure difference will allow liquid fuel to flow from fluid chamber through the you know jet tube into the orifice. Now today you need to know that because of this pressure difference what will be the amount of flow rate of fuel in fact if we are uh, calculating this flow rate of fuel that will be the ideal flow rate of fuel and from there we need to know what will be the actual flow rate of the fuel. So, today we will try to see what will be the mass flow rate of fuel and that is very important because we need to calculate you know fuel air ratio and that fuel air ratio that will be uh, of course you know the correct fuel air ratio as demanded by the engine and again we will see that what are the limitation uh, we have if we uh, use this simple float type carburetor rather we can say what are the limitations we should have uh, I mean uh, if we design a simple float type carburetor for the uh, spark ignition engine. So, now today we will discuss about the mass flow rate, mass flow rate of fuel. So, uh, if we try to recall that we had I am drawing the schematic again and there is a venturi and so this is the cross section A A the air is flowing like this this venturi is nothing but the constricted area passage and So, this is air vent, this is fuel supply from fuel tank and this is the float and this is the you know fuel in the float chamber. Now, and this is the orifice and this is discharging tube fuel well, 
discharging tube. Now we have discussed about the mass flow rate of air, today we will discuss that what will be the mass flow rate of fuel. Now this is the atmospheric pressure initially the level of fuel in the discharge tube in the float chamber will be same. Now when pressure will drop uh, rather pressure will fall at the section BB, this is section BB and this section uh, pressure when falls below the atmospheric pressure and also we have atmospheric pressure over here and that is if we say this is section CC. Now, this pressure difference is the driving force for the transport of fuel from float chamber into the discharge into the uh, into, into this uh, uh, orifice through this discharge discharging tube. So, uh, if you try to recall that we have applied ideal gas relationship and we have applied steady flow energy equation and again we will see. So, we have applied steady flow energy equation and we will discuss that the steady flow energy equation whether this assumption is valid for this analysis or not and if we need to apply this energy if we need if we need to apply this equation essentially to calculate the mass flow rate of air and fuel then what are the you know I mean uh, what and in which extent this we can apply this uh, uh, equation that is what now uh, so basically uh, again for the flow of I just I, I can write for the flow of fuel. if we again apply steady flow energy equation between section CC and between BB that is very important. So, uh, steady flow energy equation between section CC and BB then I can write P you know uh, I can write P ATM that is the pressure at section CC divided by rho fuel plus you know uh, I can write C F square C fuel divided by 2 is equal to P at section B divided by rho of course rho fuel this is not rho air plus V or C B square. I can write C B square uh, or if I write C B square divided by 2 plus this height difference that we need to know this is the height difference that we need to overcome by providing this you know pressure difference that pressure difference that will be you know that is the important concept over here that by providing venturi will have a drop in pressure of when air is approaching this section BB and because of this drop in pressure the pressure difference you know between section CC and BB that we that will try to you know drive the liquid by overcoming the distance. So, if this distance is H, so this, this, this distance is H. So, that is G into H plus since uh, fuel is having finite viscosity, so frictional losses we cannot trivially ignore. So, that means the frictional losses that is delta P I can write due to friction divided by uh, rho F. And uh, this delta P, this friction is losses due to friction as well as surface tension because although I have written friction as well as surface tension. Now, uh, if we go back to the next slide that means I can write P A by rho F plus C A uh, rather I can write not C A this will be C C C C section C. So, uh, I can write C C square by 2 is equal to equal to P B divided by rho F plus C B square by 2 plus G into H plus delta P 
friction divided by rho f. Now, uh, we can take a few assumption that is you know C C is much much less than C B because of this you know cross sectional area and uh, if we consider ideal fluid flow because ideal fluid flow then this delta P F friction delta P friction also can be ignored. So, this one and this two. So, we can write uh, if I apply then I can write C B square by 2 equal to P A minus P B divided by rho F minus G H and ultimately we will get C B equal to twice of P A minus P B divided by rho F uh, minus uh, uh, minus twice G H root of that and so this is the velocity of fuel. So this is not velocity of air, this is velocity of fuel, velocity of fuel at section B B and uh, from the continuity from the continuity we can write that m dot fuel equal to rho fuel C B into that is A fuel that is you know cross sectional area or area of the fuel discharging orifice. So, area of the fuel jet I can write this is area of fuel jet. So, now I can say this will be rho f into a f that we know because a f we know density of the fuel that we know and C b that we have calculated that is nothing but under root twice into P a minus P b divided by rho f minus twice G h. So, this is the equation of the mass flow rate. So, this is the equation for the mass flow rate of fuel, mass flow rate of air. Now, if we closely look at this equation then we can see of course, H that we need to overcome uh, the driving force we need to create and the driving force will be able to overcome the frictional losses and also the static height H to have the flow of con continuous flow of fuel into the uh, you know uh, section B B. Now, this P A minus P B that is the driving force. So, density of the fuel is fixed. So, what we can do I mean this uh, this drop in pressure that we can control by suitably designing the venturi and by reducing the size we can control the um, you know drop in pressure and accordingly we also can calculate the mass flow rate of the air. Note that the mass flow rate of fuel that we have obtained from this equation is the ideal mass flow rate because we have ignored the frictional losses essentially to simplify our analysis. If we cannot ignore this, uh, in fact we should not ignore this uh, fuel is having finite viscosity, finite surface tension and for that the actual mass flow rate should be multiplied by the uh, one discharge coefficient and so I can write actual mass flow rate, actual mass flow rate of fuel, actual uh, mass flow rate of fuel m dot f actual equal to c d f m dot f that we have calculated from equation 1 and this c d f of course, should be always less than 1. And so, this is all about the um, uh, mass flow rate of the fuel. Now, this discharge coefficient of the fuel this is uh, you know is you know that is important to know because this represents the effect that um, effect of all deviations. I mean uh, we, we did not consider the frictional effect, we did not consider the surface tensional effect. So, the 
effect of all the deviation that is represented by this you know you know uh, coefficient discharge coefficient. So, this is discharge coefficient of fuel and as I said all the deviations the, this, 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 this coefficient represents the effect of all the deviation from the ideal 1D isentropic flow. So, this represents I can write represents all the deviations all the deviations um, uh, from ideal one dimensional isentropic flow. So, and and the CDF this depends upon many factors like number 1 fuel specific gravity number 2 fluid viscosity I can write fuel or fluid fluid viscosity uh, since you know fuel is fluid here and uh, number 3 is fuel or fluid surface tension as well as mass flow rate. So, these are the three important factors uh, which you know are responsible for these you know coefficient CDF. So, we have calculated that is the uh, you know mass flow rate of the actual. Now, if you are really interested to calculate fuel air ratio that is nothing but mass flow rate of fuel divided by mass flow rate of air of course, actual value that we need to consider actual and that we have calculated from this simple mathematical analysis. Now, so by suitably designing the you know venturi we can really you know predict what will be the amount of mass flow rate of the fuel and mass flow rate of air and whether this I mean amount or uh, calculated amount of mass flow rate of air and fuel I mean fuel air ratio of course, actual not ideal one whether that 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 you know meets the demand of the engine even during the normal operation or not from there we can say whether we need to go for you know design modifications or not that we can you know calculate. Now, uh, again I will discuss one important thing that you know uh, that is what I was telling that you know uh, we have applied the steady flow energy equation. Now, question is can we really apply the steady flow energy equation to calculate the mass flow rate of air and fuel. In reality I mean if we if we try to recall that if we talk about a four stroke SI engine then in among the four different strokes only one stroke is power stroke and remaining three other, other strokes are ideal stroke. In fact, air and fuel will be inducted into the cylinder during intake stroke only. So, on in one stroke we are I mean engine is you know uh, inducting air fuel mixture into the cylinder while for the remaining three other strokes. Uh, there is no flow of air and fuel. So, how it is possible to have a steady flow of fuel and steady flow of air. So, this is one of the big you know I can say uh, limitation uh, in the context of the analysis that we have done so far. Now, uh, question is that uh, very important that in reality we have always multi cylinder engine, multi cylinder four stroke engines. So, when we when we think about when we talk about multi cylinder engines it is designed in such way that when there will be intake stroke in one cylinder there will be power stroke in other cylinder. So, that means strokes are re redistributed in such way that we will always have intake stroke in either of the uh, engine uh, cylinder in you know uh, for a multi, multi cylinder engines. So, when we talk about multi cylinder engines then multi cylinder engine then uh, it is not the case that always uh, air fuel will be inducted air fuel ratio or fuel ratio will be inducted 
during one intake stroke because the strokes are redistributed. So, when intake stroke will be in the first cylinder, maybe other three strokes uh, for other remaining, if it is if, if, say if we talk about four, four cylinder engines, now when there is intake stroke in the first cylinder, first cylinder remaining three others remaining three other cylinders other strokes are there again when there will be intake stroke in the second cylinder uh, there will be uh, you know other ideal strokes or other strokes in the remaining uh, three cylinders like this so that means uh, we always need to have flow of air and fuel continuously from this carburetor so i mean we can at least approximate that the steady flow energy because steady flow assumption is valid so now i'd like to see that to what extent steady state steady flow energy equation or steady flow energy equation uh, this you know assumptions is valid is valid that means it is valid so i can say this is more valid for multi cylinder engines multi cylinder engines and two stroke engine if we talk about four stroke single cylinder engine then the steady state steady flow assumptions are uh, not valid. That means, if we talk about two stroke engine at least we have only one power stroke versus one ideal stroke. So, fine I mean we are taking intake stroke and then again after one stroke we are getting at least we can reduce the number of ideal strokes. So, I mean the assumptions of steady flow steady state steady flow process can be considered, but if we talk about four stroke single cylinder engine then it is not valid at all and it will be valid if, as I said uh, uh, giving an example that uh, more valid for multi cylinder engine. Now question is we have studied that that uh, if we consider simple float type carburetor, so float is there the float valve that we have seen from our daily life that the responsibility rather the uh, objective of having this float valve is to have to maintain a constant high constant liquid height constant fluid uh, height rather uh, in this case constant fuel height in the float chamber. Now a reduction in height of the fuel in the float chamber uh, will be you know compensated uh, by allowing fuel to flow from fuel tank into the float chamber and that will be done by the float, ch float chamber float valve. Now this is the case. So, uh, I mean we have discussed about the simple float type carburetor we will discuss that the simple float type carburetor I mean if we now try to I will I, I will take a few you know minutes time to discuss that when you design a simple float type carburetor and this carburetor is equipped uh, with the with an engine with an engine now question is that it is not uh, it is not possible that we can you know we can change the design that means uh, in reality in practice always engines uh, need to engines need to run in at different at different loads so that means what i would like to say that when we in the, when we design a simple float type carburetor it is designed keeping in mind that for a particular load that float type carburetor that float simple float type carburetor will supply required amount of fuel air ratio or air fuel ratio that is I mean I mean these two are same. Now question is it is not expected that a particular engine will always run you know uh, at its you know des design co condition that means it is highly you know uh, possible that engine should run sometimes for at a higher you know at, at, at a load which is you know beyond its designed uh, value that means maybe sometimes the engine needs to run at no load condition sometimes engine, engine uh, needs to run at a high load condition but question is when engine is running at a in a at a load which is not uh, the designed designed load then of course 
that a deviation of the engine load from its design value of course, we will require fuel air ratio which is not the stoichiometric or chemically correct air fuel ratio or either we require we require either a lean mixture or rich mixture. Now, question is if we you know you know I can say uh, if we design a simple float type carburetor and that carburetor is equipped with a, with a particular uh, engine now now that carburetor would not be able to supply the required amount of air fuel uh, ratio which is demanded by the engine at a particular at a load which is uh, you know not the design load. So, so this this there are a few deficiencies with the simple float type carburetor and that is why there are a few issues that I mean uh, when I mean there are a few objectives which we need to consider for you know uh, designing the new carburetor. So, now I will try to write what are the deficiencies and if we try to remove those deficiencies by by suitably modifying the design of a simple float type carburetor then what will be our objectives. So, uh, I can write the, the deficiencies of a simple float type carburetor. So, this is very important that we should know I, I, I have told you, but I, I, I at least I will try to write what are the deficiencies. Now, uh, uh, I will write one by one. Number one, at no loads, at no loads, mixture become linear the engine and and the engine requires uh, the mixture to be enriched at low loads. So, this is the mixture requirement. Uh, we will see now that our common intuition is that when there is no load, I mean engine is uh, you know in at no load condition that means we are not demanding any load from the engine but during that condition also we need to supply you know rich air fuel mixture uh, that part we'll discuss now maybe in my next lecture but but if we reduce the load that mean i mean engine speed will be less and if the engine speed becomes less then of course the air fuel mixture will be reduced so this there will be the problem with the uh, simple float type carburetor that means simple float type carburetor won't be able to supply the uh, air fuel mixture which is demanded by the engine at a load which is you know different from the uh, designed load. Now, when we design a simple float type carburetor we design keeping in mind that if, if the engine operates uh, at this particular load then what will be the requirement of air fuel mixture. Now, uh, uh, engine uh, needs to run uh, at different loads and for that if we need to supply air fuel mixture using simple float type carburetor that would not be the case. Now, uh, number 2 is that at intermediate load at intermediate load the mixture equivalence ratio uh, e e the mixture equivalence ratio I am writing here equivalence ratio is defined by the 
fuel air actual divided by fuel air stoichiometric that means fuel air actual divided by fuel air chemically correct now at intermediate load the mixture equivalent ratio increases slightly slightly as the air flow increases the engine requires almost constant equivalence ratio that is the problem. So, these are the deficiencies of the simple float type carburetor. Then uh, another thing is that uh, I, I can I am writing that as the air flow air flow approaches the maximum wide open throttle valve the equivalence ratio uh, remains essentially constant but but mixture equivalence ratio should be increased should be increased to 1.1 or greater or greater to provide maximum engine power to provide that means when we wide open throttle valve the word the the this a few words i have written over here so why you need to go for wide open throttle valve the, that means engine needs to run i mean uh, to provide maximum power. So, when we try to extract that means when the situation demands uh, maximum power from the engine then the engine needs to run uh, I mean uh, in, a, in a condition when the throttle valves will be fully open. Now, that in the uh, wide open throttle valve the mixture equivalent ratio remains almost constant, but this is not the case because you need to supply the rather the equivalence ratio should be 1.1 or greater than that. So, this is another one. Number 4 is that the you know uh, elementary carburetor that we have designed that we have discussed cannot adjust the transients I mean that is very important. Uh, so, it will always supply the constant air fuel ratio, but so that is another another problem. So, elementary carburetor cannot compensate for the transient phenomena in the intake manifold. So, I can say the elementary carburetor elementary carburetor cannot compensate for for transient phenomenon phenomena 
in the intake manifold. So, this is important because we need to warm up and start starting an warm up condition. And finally, number 5 I am writing over here that uh, elementary carburetor cannot adjust that to change in ambient condition which is very important if engines uh, I mean uh, need to you know attain uh, you know at a higher elevation that means if the situation is like that engine is attaining an attaining a, a higher altitude. So, the ambient condition will be changed, but the elementary carburetor cannot compensate all those things. If we can recall that the mass flow rate of the air and fuel, in particular mass flow rate of the air that is you know function of the density of the air. So, if engine any particular engine is attaining say if the engine is attaining a, part, a particular height and at that height the ambient condition will be changed. Now, because of this change in ambient condition the density will be changed, but the elementary carburetor will not be able to adjust or will not be able to compensate all those. So, the elementary carburetor cannot adjust to change in ambient air density I am writing in particular which is due to change in altitude. So, this is another important limitation I mean I can say that uh, the simple carburetor or elementary carburetor is uh, elementary carburetor uh, with the elementary carburetor. So, the elementary carburetor cannot adjust this is very common but that engine needs to attain an, an altitude and that altitude of course, the density of the air will be changed, but uh, with the change in air density again mass flow rate will be hampered the mass flow rate predicted you, you know that we have used you know previously that will not be the that will not be the mass flow rate and that elementary carburetor will not be able to adjust. So, these are the important limitations we have. Now, question is so if we need to modify the design of a simple float type carburetor. So, we have understood the deficiencies of course, these deficiencies are very important and all the you know all the points that we have discussed now are very practical. Now, when we talk about a modern carbur modern carburetor design the impact Again, I am telling this in nowadays carburetion is almost obsolete. Even then, if uh, we need to uh, modify the design of the carburetor, then we should know what are the limitations at least uh, the simple carburetor uh, should I mean simple car simple elementary carburetor is having. Now, uh, these uh, limit efficiencies should be removed. So, the new designed you know concept or the new design aspects will uh, consider all these deficiencies and uh, I mean how we can compensate this transient phenomena, how we can consider the change in air density with the change in height and how we also can compensate the you know how we can enrich or uh, reduce the uh, I mean uh, enriching or we can uh, make, you can make the mixture linear depending upon the engine load these things should be considered in the modern carburetor design. So, these are the mixture requirement. So, that means if we talk about the you know objectives that means modern objectives of modern carburetor. design. So, number one uh, probably I have discussed about the deficiencies. So, all deficiencies should be you know uh, should be you know uh, removed should be eliminated. So, and to eliminate all those deficiencies what are the things we need to consider those are the things th those are the points we should consider while uh, you know talking about the modern carburetor. Now, 
that means uh, uh, number one number one is uh, uh, that means the main metering system must be compensated must be compensated to provide to provide essentially constant essentially constant lean or stoichiometric mixture over the 20 percent to 80 percent air flow range. So, this is number 1. So, main metering system must be compensated to provide essentially constant lean or stoichiometry mixture over the 20 percent to 80 percent air flow range. An ideal, an, an ideal system, an ideal, I can write, system must be added must be added to meter the to meter the fuel flow at ideal and light load number 3 similarly an enrichment system system must be added added so that the engine can provide its maximum power as at wide open as wide open throttle is approached as wide open throttle is approached. So, that means when wide open throttle valve that is when the throttle valve con throttle valve con condition is wide open then an enrichment system will be there so that engine can provide the maximum power so wide open throttle valve means air flow will be more so now in proportion with that increment in the air flow we need to you know enrich the uh, charge with the fuel so that system will be there so that the engine can provide maximum uh, power and and of course, we have seen that that and the choke valve the choke must be added, this is a valve must be added to enrich the mixture to enrich the mixture. Uh, during engine starting and warm up that is tangent phenomena. So, that, that means there will be a choke valve so that we can enrich the mixture during start starting and the warm up phenomenon and finally, that is very important again I am writing that the altitude compensation altitude
compensation is required to adjust the fuel flow to changes in air density. So, if the density of the air is changed that is what I have discussed now uh, I mean uh, in the in my previous slide. So, with a change in density of the air th that altitude compensation will be required so that the mass flow rate of the air should not be affected and engine can run even during that condition without you know compromising the power that is required uh, to uh, uh, during that uh, situation. Now, so today what we have to summarize today's lecture what we have seen that we have tried to calculate the mass flow rate of air that is what we have done in my last lecture. And today we have tried to calculate, in fact we have calculated mass flow rate of fuel considering again a steady flow energy equation and we have seen that if we ignore, if we consider the flow, you know ideal uh, fluid flow and from there by applying steady flow energy equation we have calculated actual mass flow rate of air and we have seen that the, you know, um, you know the uh, mathematical analysis you know gives us the ideal flow rate and that need to that should be multiplied by a discharge coefficient to obtain the actual flow rate and we have discussed about the about different factors uh, which are responsible uh, which rather which are represent which are responsible for for this uh, discharge coefficient. Now, uh, I mean this discharge coefficient uh, we should multiply uh, because the fuel fluid fuel uh, which is having finite viscosity and finite surface tension and because of these two effects I mean uh, there will be frictional losses and that losses we did not consider during the mathematical analysis. And then we have discussed about the uh, as of, you know validity of the assumptions that we have considered that is steady flow energy equation and we have seen that the assumptions of steady flow steady flow energy equation that is steady state steady flow process is valid if we talk about multi cylinder engines. But or for two stroke engine, uh, but it is not valid at all if we talk about four stroke single cylinder engine. And then after knowing this we have try we can calculate mass flow rate of fuel and air. Now question is when we talk about the design when we talk about a simple float type carburetor this float type carburetor is able rather will can supply uh, the required amount of air fuel mixture uh, when engine is running at its designed load, but it is not the case that always the engine should run at its design load, but uh, sometimes engine needs to run uh, at a load which is beyond the design load and in that case the simple float type carburetor will not be able to supply the required amount of fuel air uh, fuel and air mixture. So, uh, not only that there are other issues and we have discussed about the deficiencies of a simple float type carburetor and then if we need to modify the design of the carburetor and then all these deficiencies should be eliminated and for that what will be the design aspect that we have discussed. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we will continue, continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.